All right, so in the last video, we basically implemented the login through Redux, but we haven't implemented it in the actual login component uh, form yet or the form component. So that's what we're going to do now. So let's go up to the top of login JS. This is the components off login JS file, and we want to bring in a few things. So let's bring in prop types. We're going to need that. So we'll say import prop types from prop types and let's import connect because we're going to need that to connect to redux and that's going to be from the react redux library all right and let's import the login user function or action so that'll be from dot dot slash dot dot slash actions slash um, off actions and then let's go down to the very bottom here and let's export connect okay we want to go like that like I said we're going to be doing this quite a bit so it should stick after a while if it hasn't already um, now remember the first the first um, property here our parameter is the map state to props I'll just put null for the for the second and then let's put in login user because that is a function we want to call from the actions file all right now let's create our map state to props So we're going to have off state dot off and we're going to have errors. OK, let's create our prop types. So we'll say login, the name of the component dot prop types equals and we're going to have login user. Remember, the, these actions are properties, so it's going to be prop types dot func dot is required we're gonna have off which is an object and we're gonna have errors which is an object okay now we haven't even implemented the errors yet here from the state okay so we did in the register we did that a while ago so now we need to do it here so in the render above the return let's say const errors uh, actually we want to destructure so we want errors equals this dot state okay they're going to be stored in the state because remember we're it's they're going to come in as properties from the reducer and then we're going to use that component uh, will receive props to map it back to the state and then we need to do the same thing we did with the class names so that's another thing we need to bring in import class names from class names Okay, for the validation now later on we're actually going to create a component for each for these inputs okay which will make things a little easier I just want to I want to get the the entire authentication out of the way first um, so let's go ahead and let's add right here let's see no not right here let's say class name we'll just replace this Actually, let's let's go to our register and just copy this one of these class name things and replace that. So it's going to be is invalid if it's errors dot and this is an email field, so it'll be errors dot email. All right, and then let's also copy this, which will be the message that's displayed. So right under the input, we'll paste that in. It's going to be errors dot email and then this will also be errors dot email okay and then for the password we'll do the same thing we'll grab the class name 
paste that in. This will be errors.password. And then we'll copy this, put that in here. Password and errors.password. Okay. Those are going to come from our from our back end API. And then through the errors reducer. So now let's create our lifecycle method component will receive props. So we're going to go right here and say component will receive props. Okay, and we're going to say if next props dot errors, then we want to set this dot set state. We're going to set errors to next props dot errors. Now, we're also going to want to check to see if the user is authenticated because remember, once we log in, if we go to the, the action here, if the login passes with the user data, it's going to save the token to local storage. It's going to set the auth token. It's going to set the current user. Okay, right here. And then in the reducer, it's going to set is authenticated to true because the payload will be full. All right. If it passes, this will be full of with the user object, the decoded user object. So this will be set to true and then the user will be in user. So what we want to do when we get our props back in the in the login form is we also want to test to see if um, is authenticated is true. So we'll say if next props dot is uh, um, I'm sorry, next props off dot is authenticated. OK, if that's true, then what do we want to do? We want to redirect to the dashboard. So I'm going to say this dot props. Since we're in the component, we can simply just do this dot props dot history dot push. And we can go to the dashboard. OK, which doesn't exist yet, but that's fine. What we're going to get to that. Let's save. And let's make sure we have no errors here. Next props is not defined. That's because I forgot to pass it in right here. Uh, and map state to props. Looks like I forgot to pass that in here as well. All right, so that should be good. So let's go to our form login form this time, not the registration. And let's make sure let's reload, make sure there's nothing wrong here. Make sure there's no console errors and let's just click submit. All right, so. Oh, we didn't <laughs> we didn't call the action. So if we go up here, it's calling on submit and then all on submit is doing is console logging the user. We actually have to call the action. So this dot props dot login user and we want to pass along um, user actually we'll call this user data let's change this to user data all right so now it's going to actually call the action this action here all right so let's try it let's try it with no field no values and there we go email field is required password is required um, and you can see it's getting the errors from the errors reducer, putting it into our state. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in. Let's put in an email that doesn't exist. OK, I think the only one we have is John at Gmail. Let's try test at test.com with just any password and submit and we get user not found and look at the diff. You can see that the state of the errors has changed. These are no longer there now we just have user not found as our email error all right see how this all comes together nicely now if we put a user that does exist so john at gmail.com if we do that without the correct password let's see what happens password incorrect and look at our state it's now password password incorrect now let's go ahead and put in the correct password and see what happens 
submit and we got redirected to the dashboard with which doesn't exist yet that's fine and look at is authenticated it's now true and if we look at the user it has the user's ID the name the avatar the expiration and the issued at date for the for the token all right so now that we're logged in any requests we make will have that authorization header okay but we have an issue and that is that if the page reloads that all goes away okay so if I reload the page here and we take a look at our state it's false okay so it didn't it's not going to stick if the page is reloaded and obviously we don't want that so what we're going to do is we're going to put some logic Let's just go back to login. We're going to put some logic in our app.js file. Okay, to basically always check to see if we're logged in. All right, and the way we're going to do that is check to see if the token is in local storage. And I actually probably should have showed you this. If we go to application, uh, where is it? Application. And we go to local storage right here JWT token you can see our token is stored in there so what we'll do is let's actually remove it for now and then what we'll do is go to our app JS and we're going to want to bring in that JWT decode so let's go right here and let's import JWT underscore decode from JWT decode. We're also going to want to bring in that set auth token. So let's say import set auth token, which is from uh, that's in the utils. So dot slash utils slash set auth token. All right, so we'll bring that stuff in. Um, we also want to bring in from the actions, the auth actions, we want that set current user. All right, and we're going to need this for the logout as well. Um, so let's say import set current user from dot slash actions slash auth actions. All right, um, let's see. Yeah, so that should be good for now. And then let's go down. We'll go right on un right under the where we brought in the app CSS and let's say check for token. So we're going to say if local storage dot JWT token. So if that exists, then we want to set the auth token header off and we can do that by simply calling set auth token okay and then that's going to take in the token which is stored in local storage so we can just do this again token so that'll set that then we want to decode the token. Let's say decode token and get user info and expiration. So we'll say const decoded. So we're doing mostly the same stuff we did within that login action, except we're, we're checking for this with every single page request to make sure the user's logged in or not, or to check if they're logged in or not. So let's say JWT underscore decode. And we can pass in our token that's in the local storage. So local storage JWT token. And then what we want to do here is we want to then call the set current user action. Okay, so this right here, set current user. So to do that, we can just say, actually, let's put a comment and say set user and is authenticated so we can say store dot dispatch 
Okay, we can call anything in our store with store dos dot dispatch any action, and we're going to say set current user, and we're going to pass in decoded, just like that. All right, so let's save, and let's go back. And if I reload, the state should be the auth should be empty. We're not logged in. Let's go ahead and add, or let's log in with John at gmail.com. One, two, three, four, five, six. So once we log in, it calls the login action. It's going to store the token in local storage, and it's going to set the user right, just like we saw before. Now you can see is authenticated true. User has all the data. Now if I reload. And you can see that it's still there. It's still true. We still have the user. Okay, so no matter what page we go to now, if I go back to let's go back, we're not going to be able to do this in the future. Go to sign up if you're logged in, but for now we can. But you can see that we're still logged in. We're still authenticated. True. We still have the user. All right. So that's that. So in the next video, we're going to create a log out, okay? Because we need to be able to clear this user out of the auth and set is authenticated back to false. So we'll have a link to for us to be able to do that. Then once we get that login log out done, we can start to focus on access control. We can focus on having the nav bar display different links if we're logged in or not. Um, we can focus on allowing us to go to the dashboard, which we haven't yet created, or redirecting us away from the registration if we're logged in, because that doesn't make very much sense. All right, so once we do that, once we do the logout, we'll focus on access control and then creating the rest of our app, which will be not too bad. This, this is probably the hardest part of the, the entire course, in my opinion. All right, so I will see you in the next video.